Good morning, brothers and sisters. Matthew 13, verses 24 through 30 says, The kingdom of heaven may be compared to a man who sowed good seed in his field. But while his men were sleeping, his enemy came and sowed tares among the wheat and went away. But when the wheat sprouted and bore grain, then the tares became evident also. The slaves of the landowner came and said to him, Sir, did you not sow good seed in your field? How then does it have tares? And he said to them, An enemy has done this. The slave said to him, Do you want us then to go and gather them up? But he said, No, for while you are gathering up the tares, you may uproot the wheat with them. Allow both to grow together until the harvest. And in the time of the harvest I will say to the reapers, First, gather up the tares and bind them in bundles to burn them up, but gather the wheat into my barn. Throughout redemptive history, our Lord has planted believers, good seed, in the world as his witnesses to be faithful to him, become fruitful plants of righteousness, and reflect his will before a corrupt world. The tares, by contrast, are the children of Satan. Unbelievers spread throughout the world until they thoroughly outnumber the wheat by a large margin. The harvest represents the Father's judgment at the end of the age, when his angels will execute sentence on the many unbelievers, just as the human reapers separated the tares from the wheat and burned them. The apostles likely were ready and eager to separate out the tares immediately, as seen by James and John's attitudes toward the unbelieving Samaritans in Luke 9 verse 54. But that was and is not God's plan, lest some of the good plants, the believers, get uprooted with the tares. During his incarnation, Jesus did nothing to destroy his enemies. He even appealed to Judas right to the end that he believed, John 13 verse 26. On the cross, he asked forgiveness for those who orchestrated his execution. Therefore, we also should be instruments of truth and grace toward unbelievers. This is not the age of God's judgment, not in the church age, but rather the age for evangelism. What does this mean concerning the way we are called to perform ministry in this generation? Maranatha.